Today I would like to talk about a new feature coming to OpenFlow. Um, instead of focusing so much on Node-RED, we now have the concept of agents, which will allow us to run code, many different types of code and many different types of workflow engines and, you know, lots more freedom and much more possibilities. So instead of having a Node-RED app, we now have an agent app. And inside here, I can then spin up an instance with support for the workflow engine or programming language that I want. So let's say that I'm a Python developer. I can start an, an agent that runs a Python script that I wrote. So the way that we do that is we either give it a, a GitHub repository or a file ID for a file that contains the, the, the files that we want to run. So in this case here, I want to run the Python script that is on this GitHub repository. So if I go to that GitHub repository, you can see that I have a requirements file that will automatically be run when the agent starts. And then it looks for the default file, in this case, main.py and it then runs the code that is inside here. By doing this, this gives me the freedom to work with this in the environment that I prefer. So for instance, I like code, uh, visual code. So I could sit inside here, I can put a breakpoint, I can run it, I can single step through it, I can troubleshoot it, I can do all the things that I want. And when things are the way that I want it, I can pu publish that to GitHub and then run it inside uh, OpenFlow. If you don't like that, you can also use Jupyter and you can run it inside here, right? So you can use the environment that you like and love. And then once it's ready, you can deploy it and it can run inside OpenFlow. So if I start up this instance, so name will be the name that I see on my list. I can call it whatever I want. It also needs a unique name. Um, and I can select the image that I want to run. And, you know, if you're running on Kubernetes and have uh, multi-tenancy enabled, we can also control how many resources that agent have access to. So once it's up and running, you can see that they cloned the GitHub repository and it then ran the code, which is now connected to OpenFlow. So in this case, what the code does is that it waits, you know, it, it listens for messages from on, on, on a message queue. And when there's a message, which symbolizes there's a work item ready it then downloads that work item all the files associated with it and it then runs whatever code you have inside here so this becomes your boilerplate code for how you would start working with this and you can then customize it to your need but mainly what you do is the code that you want to do for each work item you put it right here so in this case all i'm doing is i'm just updating the name to say hello kitty so if I go to work items and I add a work item and I put it in my Pi agent queue and I type a random name, click save, then instantly it starts processing it and updating the name to Hello Kitty. So now I can add as many things to, to this agent as I want and it will just, you know, go through all of those and process them. This is a little bit basic, right? We want something more advanced. So what we could do is we could say, I want to run tag UI or robot framework or any other framework for RPA that exists in Python. You can now run that inside here and use the work item queues to, you know, control the load that you sent to these. So I have a couple of example GitHub repositories that you can work with that allows you to do that, but let's look at one of them, right? So let's use tag UI. So I select the image that has Python, but also is bundled with a desktop and a Chromium browser. And I give it a little bit more RAM to make sure that it works smoothly. So here I can then run a tag UI agent and I'm going to use the tag UI GitHub repository. And I'm going to tell it to wait on the queue called tag UI test. So if I spin up this agent now, I can now start adding work items that is then targeted tag UI. And inside that, I can then customize that to do whatever I want. So if I clean this up and I add a tag UI, add something inside here. Then once the agent is up and running, it will then get that instance and it will start processing it. And when it's done, when it's done, there we go. You can see that it ran 
uh, and it took a, pi uh, a picture of, of a, a, a website uh, as part of, of, of running that tag UI script. So to customize this a little bit, what I can do is I can add another item and I can say that the URL I wanted to get is openaip.io instead, right? So let's give it something pretty to look at. So I'm gonna click save and it's processing and it's done. And now I have a pretty picture of the website, you know, my website. So this is just to demonstrate how we can you know, create custom work items, you know, units of work that then interact with some RPA framework and then runs inside Docker. So now we have a lot more possibilities, but this is not limited to Python. There are actually agents for uh, Node.js and of course with Chrome. So we can run Puppeteer for instance inside here. There is a, a specific image for Node-RED. So and this is a more generic Node-RED image, which is easier to update and maintain. So I'm looking very much forward to using that a lot more. We also have a, an image for .NET and there is a new get package with, you know, an SDK for talking to OpenFlow from, from .NET as well. And of course the Python things that we just looked at. Um, so I, yeah, I hope this is uh, interesting and uh, I'm looking forward to feedback. Good luck.